First Kings chapter 19. The rain has come. Three and a half years. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah has done. So he goes home and tells the missus. Jezebel is the wicked one. Ahab is a puppet. A puppet in the hands of Jezebel. He's not really king. She rules. We'll see that as we move on. But here's Jezebel again. And with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. That happened in verse 18, chapter 18, excuse me. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods, small g o d s, so it shows where she stands, do to me, and more also. If I make not thy life as the life of one of the them by tomorrow about this time. So if I don't go out and kill you, may all the gods that I worship do me harm. As you killed those prophets, you're dead. And it's a death threat. It makes you wonder why she sent the messenger out. Why didn't she just go do it? And when he saw that, What did he see? Should have been when he heard that. When he saw that, maybe it was put in writing. He arose and went for his life. He's on the run. Now we're going to see an opposite of Jonah. Jonah heard the word of God and he takes off to rebel against God. Elijah has got this death threat and he runs. And came to Beersheba, that's down south. Man, Elijah's all over the place. Which belongeth to Judah. He's come from Israel, and he's left down to Judah. And left his servant there. That's the one he said, you know, go check over the sea. I don't see nothing. Go do it seven times. And I see this cloud as a man's hand. But he himself, Elijah, went a day's journey into the wilderness. Anywhere between 20 to 30 miles. He is on the road now of discouragement. Of depression. And we're going to see in his life. That he will not give God the regard. And it will be to his undoing. And the first thing is he wants to be alone. He ought to have his servant encourage him. He should not have gone off all by himself. And came and sat down under a juniper tree. Shade. Resting. Take a break from life. Nothing wrong with that. He's been on the run 20-30 miles. Take a rest, Elijah. And that's Jonah. And he requested for himself that he might die. And said, it is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life. Now, that's exactly Jonah. Now Jonah is in a bitterness of, he does not want to do what God's told him to do to go to the Gentiles. Elijah, he's had this death threat. And evidently, Jezebel, is true to her word that it would cause this great man of God to be in fear and on the run. If she's not a woman of her words, he would not have feared. He would have probably gone up to her and given her a piece or two. But he doesn't. He runs as far as he can. And even at one point says to his servant, you stay here. Maybe he's looking to protect that servant because if you're found with me, you're a dead man too. Am I not better than my fathers? So. He fears Jezebel now. And not God. He doesn't say God. I need your help right now. Because you know how bad this woman is. You know what authority this woman has. 
You know what she can do. And Lord God, I'm sorry, but I fear her more than I need than I fear you. I need your help. No, he's like, Lord, kill me. Get it over with. And as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him. And this is where you get uh, the pro program touched by an angel. Nobody has nothing like Elijah. This is the only place that an angel would touch. And said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals, and a cruise of water. Now, does that remind you of something Elijah's like? God's provision when he sent the crow, uh, the raven, excuse me. What God is doing is saying, Elijah, remember what I've done for you. Haven't I taken care of you? Didn't we just go through a series of three and a half years of a drought? Did you die then? And there may have been times in that drought that Elijah may have said, God, you know what, this is, this is too much. I, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, and, and maybe the ravens came. And there are times in your life you're going to get discouraged. You're going to get in depression. You're going to be like, God, let's just end it all now. Come on. But God's not finished with Elijah. He's not done. And he says, listen, here's some food, here's some water. You've been on the run for a long time. You had your sleep. Here's some food and water. And cruise ahead at his head. So there it is. As he's laying down, there it is. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. Man, he's tired. He wakes up for the meal and he goes right back to sleep. He's been on the run. The angel of the Lord, that's Jesus Christ, before his birth. He didn't just send an angel this time like he did last time. He sent the angel of the Lord came again the second time. Oh, oh, so that first angel is the Lord Jesus Christ that came to him. Scripture with scripture. Like when we read about Jacob wrestling with that man. Well, when we go over to Hosea, we find out that man was an angel. When we read about the men, the angels that came to Abraham and had a meal. We find out later on, those same men are the ones that entered into Lot, city, Sodom, and touched him again, and said, Arise, and eat, because the journey is too, too great for thee. You wonder if Elijah on that mount with Jesus Christ ever had that time of bringing this back up again. Elijah's at the point he wants to die. Jesus Christ was on the point he was going to die. It says Moses and Elijah talked with Jesus. They certified all the prophecies. Have they been complete? And Jesus goes off in the garden and says, Father, if this, if this cup will pass, but not my will, but thy will be done. Imagine if, if, if Jesus went to, went to Elijah and they're talking and saying, Oh man, you know how bad that cross is going to be. Well, Jesus, remember that time you touched me? Remember I was discouraged? I don't know. I'm just maybe to throw it in the garbage can what I'm saying. But here it is. And he, Elijah, arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights. So that meal lasted a long time. Again, now you see Moses, Jesus, and Elijah all 40 days without food. Because that meal that he had, had him 40 days and 40 nights without food unto Horeb, the Mount of God. Exodus 3.1, that's where Moses was. And you got to wonder if this is where Moses was, this was where Elijah was, that Mount of Transfiguration. Where Jesus was with Moses and Elijah. You got to wonder if that's it. Elijah would probably be standing in the same spot where Moses was. 
And remember one time that Moses went up on this mountain here. He's, he's angry and distraught at the sin of the people of Israel for their... What was the image? What was the image that Elijah had to face? Golden calves? At that point, there would be three. The golden calf that Aaron made and the two golden calves that Jeroboam made that is still being worshipped by Ahab and Jezebel, the unholy trinity. And he came hither unto the cave. Here's, here's another caveman, like Lot. Walks into a cave and lodged there. Now he's discouraged. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him. See, God still wants to use him. God is not finished with him. Elijah, get off your move. Elijah's become inactive. He's forgotten that, oh, he was fed by the ravens. He was fed by the, the angel. He stood down and out. What doest thou here, Elijah? What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, slain thy prophets with the sword. That's Jezebel. Remember, Obadiah had a hundred of them in caves by 50 to help and protect them. He's going about what Ob Obadiah has done to protect the prophet. He's run off to a cave. It's working for those hundred prophets. It's going to work for me. Jezebel's after me. Jezebel was after those hundred prophets. Now you see the fact is he really fears the death of Jezebel. Thrown down thy altar, slain thy prophets with a sword. That's what I did. Now I got this letter or I got this from the messenger. This is what she's going to do to me. Verse 1. I mean verse 2. And I, even I, only am left. And they seek my life to take it away. You got the hundred other prophets. They, I don't think they've been killed yet. And what now Elijah's having, he's having a pity party. Oh God, I'm the only one left. God, everybody's against you. Oh God, it's just me in this cave, me and my misery. That's what he told God. And God said, he said, Go forth. What is God's command for those who are discouraged and in depression? Go forth. Don't sit around. That's worse. And stand upon the mount before the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital... Just as Moses... And if it's the same mount, just as Jesus. Because remember, they're standing on that mount. Peter, James, and John, they wake up, they're rubbing their eyes, and Peter said, oh, let's build a tabernacle for thee, for Moses, for Elijah. And then that cloud came. There was a cloud in chapter 18. I don't know if there's a cloud here, but there's God. And he's speaking to Elijah out of heaven as he spoke to Peter, James, and John out of heaven. As he spoke to Moses out of heaven. Don't you see Mount Horeb is a wonderful place for Israel, for Moses and Elijah, the mouth of God spoken. And if this is the place of the, of the transfiguration, and then the mouth that spoke to Peter, James, and John. Makes you wonder if they were in that cave of sleep. I don't know. And behold, the Lord passed by. And let's see. I don't know if I can find it. Okay, I'm just thinking about it right now. Oh, I don't think I'm going to go. But it said, it said, when God passed by Moses, let's see if I can find it. I'm just checking if I can find this spot. I'm just thinking now. But it said to the fact, Moses said, let me see thy glory. The Lord said, no man can see my face except he die. And then, 
when he said, I'll put you in a cleft of the rock. And I, I think he said he passed by. I, I can't find it. It's in Exodus. I think that's exactly what God did to pass by. I think that's exactly what God did with Moses. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains. That's a mighty big wind if it, if it cut a mountain in half. That pictures the second advent when the feet of Jesus Christ goes on Mount Olive and he splits that mountain in half. And break in pieces the rock before the Lord. That is some wind. That's a powerful wind. That's a mighty wind, Elijah. That's a forceful wind. But the Lord was not in the wind, that powerful, mighty wind. God wasn't in that wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. That's the first time earthquake shows up in the Bible. This wind has already broken the rocks in the mountain. And God sends an earthquake to break the ground. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. I mean, something as powerful as the earthquake, something as powerful as that wind. God's, I'm not in that. Well, and he's showing an illustration to Elijah. Though as mighty as the wind can be, as powerful as it can be in an earthquake. I'm not in that. No mighty, great, mighty deeds, Elijah. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And when you read about Moreb, Horeb and the Israelites, they said that that mountain was on fire and burned and smoked. And after the fire, the Lord wasn't in that fire. Fire is destructive. The Bible says our, our God is a consuming fire. A still, small voice. And that still, small voice, that's what God was in. Elijah, I love you. I can do all the great things. I can bust the earth open. I've fed you. I've given you water. I've let you have sleep. And it was so when Elijah heard it, the voice, that he wrapped his face in his mantle. And that's some kind of cloak, coat, sweater, different definitions of where you go. But it's like a wrap. You know, you put it over your shoulders. And he went out and stood in the entering of the cave. So he wraps his face out and he goes out of the cave. He's wrapped up. His head is covered. I don't want to see you, God. Or maybe God's just too holy. Maybe I'm just too vile. Maybe I'm just so much ashamed. But he's been in that cave during the whole time. And behold, there came a voice unto him. And said, What doest thou here, Elijah? This is the second chance. Now this voice is not in his head. A voice came unto him. It didn't come from him. It came unto him. So when God speaks to the, to the people in the Old Testament and, and the Gospels and the, the, the disciples in the book of Acts, it's not like, oh, you know, you hear that voice, you hear the music in your head. That's not it. Here is the person. Here is the voice over here. It's two different things. And he said, this is Elijah again, and repeat. It's a repeat of verse 10. I have been very jealous of the Lord God of hosts. Because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant. They have thrown down thy altars. They have, He had to repair that altar on Mount Carmel, remember? And slain thy prophets with the sword. Well, that's Jezebel. And I, even I only, am left. I'm the only one here. And they seek my life to take it away. No, Jezebel, verse 2. Who's the they? It's Jezebel. She wants you. So now what he's done in his uh, discouragement, in his depression, he's inflated his trouble. The whole world's after me. I'm the only one that's left. And God will shoot that down in a moment. God told him to go. God told him, get out of here. Go. Get out there. And God's going to give him a commission to do. And we're going to look at the two scriptures and say he did not do it. 
He is now in his depression, in his discouraging. God is telling him to do things, and he's, no. God will give him three things to do, and he only will do one. We'll look at it in the scripture in a moment. He becomes inactive. And the Lord said unto him, Go. What is the answer to discouragement and, and uh, depression? Go. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Go do something for God. Return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. <laughs> That's funny because the road of Damascus where, where Saul, Paul was. And when thou comest, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. All right, command, commandment or job number one. Get out of here and go anoint this man king. 2 Kings 8.12 2 Kings 8.12 God said, I got a cure for you. I got three jobs for you to do. 2 Kings 8, 12, and 13. And Hazel said, Why weepest thou, my Lord? And he answered, Because I know the evil that thou wilt do unto the children of Israel, their strongholds, wilt thou set on fire, their young men wilt thou slay with the sword, and wilt dash the children and rip up their women with child. And Hazel, Hazel said, but what is thy servant a dog that he should do this great thing? And Elisha answered, The Lord has shown me that thou shalt be king over Syria. There's Elisha and Hezio. Not Elijah. And Elijah anoints Hezio king. Sets him as a king. God told Elijah to do that. What we just read in 15. He says, go anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. Elisha was there. Verse 16. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. 2 Kings 9.1 2 Kings 9.1 Number 2. Commission. 2 Kings 9.1 And what we just read about Hazel... Not exactly Elisha anointed him, but he put him in office. 9-1. And Elisha, not Elijah, Elisha, the prophet, called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him, Gird up thy loins, take this box of oil in thy hand, and go to Rimeth Gilead. When thou comest thither, look out there, Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, son of Nirkshai, and go in and make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him to the inner chamber. Then take the box of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Now Elijah sent somebody else because the charge was given to Elijah. These two things Elijah has not done. Elisha is involved, but he does not do the anointing. That was Elijah's job. Verse 16, Jehu the son of Nimshai, that's the grandfather, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. He doesn't do that. Number three, and Elisha, that's the first time that shows up, Elisha, the son of Sheba of Abel Mahela, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Now he's going to pick up Elisha at the end of this chapter. That's the only one he does. And he does it with an attitude we'll see in a moment. He says, no, you know, he's got to the point, you know what? I got to have someone take your place, Elisha. Because God already knows the foreknowledge that he's not going to do it. His discouragement, his depression has gone to the point is he is... Being inactive for God. He's not doing what God's telling him to do. Bring on rebellion. God told him to go and he's still there. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth. That's the first time that word shows up. The sword of Hazel. 
shall Jehu slay. And him that escapes the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Elijah's going to be doing some killing. Just like Elijah did. You're going to find Elisha is going to carry the office over of Elijah with more power. And yet I, God, I, God, Feeling really sorry for yourself, Elijah, Elijah? Have left me 7,000 in Israel. That's north Israel. That's where they, no king has ever done right. That's where the, the, the golden calves are. That's where Baal is now. That's where Jezebel is, is the queen of all the land. And in that land, I have 7,000 in Israel. You're not the only one, Elijah. Remember the 100 Obadiahs protecting? God rebukes Elijah. All the knees which have not bowed on to Baal. Also, oh, you get your knees on for Baal. Every mouth which has not kissed him. And they kiss idols, they kiss images, they'll kiss their beads. The, the priest will take out that ribbon and he'll kiss it long before Jesus Christ was ever born. And Judas will kiss Jesus. So he departed thence, not with a full attitude, and found Elisha the son of Shebat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen with before him. Twelve, that's the number of Israel. This is a sign to Elijah. This is a sign to Elisha. And he with the twelve. Jesus is on the road one day, a father comes up to him and goes, My twelve year old daughter is about to die if not die. Come to my house and, and do something, Lord. Okay, let's go. And on the way, he meets a woman that has a bloody flux 12 years. Those are signs, but Jews require a sign. Here, it, Do you see God say, Elijah, you get out of this pity party. Will you get your... And he won't. And he won't. And God gets to the point, I can't use him. And Elijah passed by him. And cast his mantle upon it. He's walking by. He takes his mat. <coughs> That's not anointing, Elijah. <laughs> Taking your shirt or your wrap and throwing it on the guy. That's not. That's the only time that ever happens in the Bible. Here, here's my mantle. <laughs> God says, you're going to be in my office. So here, take my clothes. Take the shirt off my back is where the expression is. You see what kind of attitude Elijah's got? Here. And he left the oxen, this would be Elisha, and ran after Elijah. This gets sometimes tongue twice. And he said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother. And then I will follow thee. So Elisha already knows that God's probably already spoken to Elisha. Elisha's going to come. He's going to put you in the office. Not like that, but he's going to put you in the office. He's like, okay, Elijah, let me say goodbye to my family because I know we're going to have a long road ahead. Jesus said, uh, uh, a disciple that look, look his back. It's not worthy. That's coming on to the New Testament. This is not the New Testament. Let me go back and kiss my family. And he said unto him, this would be Elijah, go back again. For what have I done today? Whoa. You kind of anointed him. You want to throw your shirt on? You started it, Elijah. You know, he's like, if God wants you to do the job, take over my spot, here, take it. Well, I won't go back and say, what's it to me? You know, look at the attitude. He should have said, okay, let me, okay, can I have my shirt back or coat, whatever it is? Go ahead and say goodbye to him. Then we'll get going. Elijah is just going to keep on walking by. God, you take care of him. He's done. He, he's, he's not being used. He, he's got no will. And he turned back from him, Elisha, and took a yoke of oxen, that would be assumed to, and slew them, and boiled, that's the first time boiled shows up, their flesh, with the instruments of the oxen. 
You imagine the father of their day. Here comes he's count, he, here comes eleven hours. Well, where's the twelfth one? Your son burnt it all up and burned the animals. And gave them unto the people there. Elijah is getting another free feast from the Lord. We're making a kind of sacrifice to God. We're all going to have a meal before we get going. That's what's going on. That's what happened on the mountain. Rise and eat. And they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah. After. Elijah started walking. Or the context would be, Elijah is my head, Elijah is my teacher, I'm his follower. It could be that context too. And he ministered unto him. Whatever Elijah needed, Elijah was there. That's the definition of minister. Elijah is not the minister. Elijah is the minister-er. And Elijah will do things for Elijah too. So now we see, we get a little bit of a Elijah. Remember, Elijah just showed up one day, right in King Ahab's face. Caused three and a half years of no rain. And then James says at the mouth of Elijah, it's going to rain. And boy, did it rain. Ahab goes home and says, honey, boy, you know those prophets you have? Yes, dear. Elijah killed them. Writes down a decree from Elijah, you're dead. Runs off, has his pity party, gets discouraged, he gets depressed, and he's not obeying God. And God's command to him is go, get going, do something. And that's pretty much the situation. Get going what God's told you to do. And there's going to be all kinds of death threats. There's all going to be kinds of threats. Jesus Christ. They fulfilled their threat. The Bible says throughout the God, they planned to kill him. They planned to slew him. They planned how they could get him. And what can we do? We want to destroy him. And they accomplished exactly what they wanted to do. Now, Elijah can't read the rest of the book of Kings. What Elijah doesn't know is he's going to be with Elisha one day, and then here comes his chariot of fire. Boom, he doesn't die. But whatever you do, don't tell Elijah now he's coming back in the tribulation period and he's going to lose his neck. Don't tell him that. Well, he's not going to lose. He's going to die. People are going to hate him. Don't tell him that. This is not the time to tell him about the book of Revelation. Elijah right now, I don't know what he knows. He knows he didn't die, but he's coming back to die. You're going to have the second coming of Moses, second coming of Elijah, second coming of Jesus Christ. You're going to have the second coming of all the apostles except for Jude. Not Judas will come back. As a false prophet. Peter, James, and John, all the disciples are going to be in the land again. Sitting on thrones like Jesus Christ. You're going to have the second coming of David, second coming of Solomon. It's going to be great. Second coming of me. <laughs> what a great time. You get depressed, you get discouraged, and the world's going to do it. You're going to have your Jezebel. They're going to get you. I've been dis discouraged. I've been depressed with, with the public ministry. You just got to keep going. Let God help you. And as God spoken in that small voice, a testimony last week, you know, I'm looking at the people and I'm just thinking, you know what, they're not listening. They don't care. And we opened the Gospel of John chapter 17. He says, the world hates you. No one hated me. I have prayed to the Father. The Father will not take you out of the world, but the Father will strengthen you in the world. And you just keep going do what I told you to do. There will be crowns and rewards. Then there will be wood, hay, or stubble. You know? But one day I'm going to get a new body. One day I'm going to have a sinless body. One day I'm going to have all the tears wiped away. And one day forever to be glory, magnified, mercy, grace, no more sin. And the world is discouraging. And that's the world. 